I see your body, I see yours, I see a cameraman, I see this board. This is in the material world. Mm -hmm. When we dream, we are in a non-material world. And there's a world in between which is reality, we call it. When Nano was a computer nerd in the Matrix, he was in this world. Then he took a pill and he moved to this world. And there he is, he's trained in all kinds of things like martial arts and he used it when he came back in this world. We don't shift bodies, but we only shift consciousness. So when we put on our blindfolds, our masks, we move to this place, we train here and we turn it off again and we are back here. That's what the Matrix is. You stay in Wonderland. The movie's dystopian vision of a future world in which the protagonists shuffle painfully between different levels of reality reflects much of what the followers of the method believe they are able to achieve using only their minds. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. From this rather eccentric start, things got stranger as Peter went on to explain that the method has 18 levels, only three of which have been worked out. Mm -hmm. Level 1 teaches students how to generate the energy necessary to apply the Bronikov method. If I'm looking now, my brain gets the energy because light is coming through my eyes. But as soon as I close my eyes, where is the energy coming from? Eurogenital system. The Eurogenital system. So by doing the, the level 1 exercise, we improve this part. And as soon as I close my eyes, this generator starts to work. It gives energy to my brain. If I don't develop that, it will destroy you. The brain would be drawing energy from the urogenital system that isn't there and would physically damage the body as well. That's, right. so That's why the main thing within our method is safety rules. So much for level one. Level 2 teaches students how to use their psychic powers and magnetic energy fields to bypass their eyes and generate a blank screen in their mind. This they call the psychobiocomputer. And in level 3, students learn how to see the real world on that blank screen, even if they're blind. And level 3 is, is extremely uh, valuable for people who have no eyesight. Because then your brain will see the outside world directly. But back on the course, things didn't seem to be working out so well. Any sensation there? No. No. Nothing changes. Level 1 is designed to teach us how to generate the energy needed to use the method. We learn how to create balls of energy with our hands, a familiar exercise I've come across before. We rub our hands together and are told to feel the resultant odd sensation in the hands as an energy ball and one that can then be transferred to and held by another person. I must have really dead hands. Yeah. Why don't you try it with, yeah, you try it yeah. with uh, Judy? Because you're, at least we know that half of it will be... <laughs> Sorry, it really doesn't feel any different. Doesn't matter. What we do, we will move on. So we will... I will go up your hands and we'll take the ball... So I will up. tell you if I feel yeah, it. It's okay, it's okay. okay. Of course, it's one thing to imagine you have an energy, another for it to be real enough to pass on to someone else. So I'm not surprised that we didn't have much success. Now we learned how to use our urogenital areas to generate the energy that would eventually make it possible for us to create a blank screen in our mind which the Bronikovs call a psychobiocomputer. Judy and Margaret are only taking the level one course, I was allowed to observe the advanced level three.
This is the zenith of the method, where we hope to see X-ray vision being developed as the students learn to control the objective out of vision that will help them to see through their blindfolds. Blind or sighted, the course offers this extraordinary possibility to all. Knowing what the mind can achieve, I want to look at the evidence and see if this course lives up to its amazing claims. Vladimir communicates with his multilingual audience through translators. Now I watch the level three students performing a key technique known as a splash. Releasing the urogenital energy in a seemingly powerful instant. The splash is um, raising the energy from the urogenital system. Mm -hmm. Bring it up. So first you close your eyes. Mm -hmm. and you make claws over here. Mm -hmm. you bring it up. And when you have enough pressure in your head, you throw it out very fast. So you open up your eyes very fast. And then the energy comes out. Which is how you prepare the body energetically as a safety. Okay. <coughs> you can feel energy coming out. Vladimir was testing in front of people's eyes if there really was a hit. Oh, that's what he was doing. He yeah, was testing it. I see. And as soon as you have done a level two or level three exercise, mm -hmm. you put on your mask and you have started your, your cycle by computer and you turn it off and you end with the splash to come back in this reality mm -hmm. in a normal way. And your brain are in a normal state again. On this first day, I saw no signs of alternative vision. Instead, they worked on remembering large quantities of information in a flash. It was intriguing, but even with this, no one seemed to have any clear success. Our first day of the Bronikov method had felt endless to me, so I wondered what Judy and Margaret had made of it. Yeah, yeah. I don't quite understand what we're supposed to be feeling or mm. what these sort of fields of energy are supposed to be about. Mm. He talks about imagining a ball of energy, feeling a ball of energy. And you can sort of do that to an extent in your head, but then it, it, it only goes so far. Then you sort of feel you have to kind of play along a little bit after that. There's a pressure of somebody saying, say yes when you feel this energy yeah, reach your yes. elbow. Yeah. And they're standing there waving their arms around. After, you just feel after a while you've got to say yes just to... Well, that's right. Yeah. To, yeah. to please them in a sense. To please them, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Some of them was what I would call a bit off the wall. Yeah. Definitely a bit off the wall. But let's see what today brings. Maybe there will be things that begin to make sense of yesterday. Yeah. And what the day held in store was something quite special. Vladimir had agreed to give Judy a diagnosis. Using his skills of alternative vision, he would look inside Judy's body and diagnose her condition. He claims to be able to see right inside her and describe exactly where the problems lie. This I was looking forward to. It could provide actual tangible evidence of those X-ray skills. We were joined by a translator. Yes, it means that he turned on his microphone computer. Сначала можно посмотреть смещение позвонков. Шейный отдел 3-4 влево. Седьмой первый грудной назад. И в поясничном отделе 4 немножко влево. И копчик смещен по часовой стрелочке. Чуть по часовой стрелочке, чуть смещен на миллиметр. Can I ask what he means by thoracic spine? То мне потом можно будет просто посмотреть грудной, где находится между шеином и поясничным. Okay. Can I ask if we can direct attention to the around the eyes? No. В целом по кровообращению в эту зону вообще сильно снижен приток крови. Начинается это еще в лобной доле. Там э, венозный застой. Сами глаза как бы, активного очага нет никакого. То есть, ну, yeah. как это объяснить? А, ну, активного очага нет. Themselves, there is no То есть, они очень active zone, active center, let's say. Вялые. Mm -hmm. 